All right, everybody, welcome back to Destiny, and welcome back to the channel. It is Frost. We are here on the beautiful world that is Nessus, and uh, we're doing the first video in a long line of videos to come entitled Zerde. Or, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to title it yet, but it's probably just going to be titled what I called it before, because you guys really seem to enjoy these channels back in the day when playing Destiny 1. And uh, without further ado, this is obviously week one of Zer. You know, he sells exotics. I'm basically going to let you guys know what he is selling and what my recommendations are, uh, what you should buy and spend your legendary shards on, and, you know, how much legendary shards he costs for buying one of these weapons or one of these pieces of armor. But nonetheless, we are on Nessus, all right? That's where he is this week. So if you guys go on your map, all right, you just load up your director here and go to Nessus, obviously on your destinations when you're in orbit or whatever, and you will see a mark on the map right here. It's a green mark, IX, that means 9 in Roman numerals for those of you who don't know. Anyway, just go to that one. Obviously, right now, this is closer to Watcher's Grave, so you could just load into Watcher's Grave, and uh, you'd be pretty close to Zer after all. Anyway, just come here as soon as you spawn in. You summon your Sparrow. You don't even have to summon your Sparrow, really. You could just kind of walk over here, and you can see... The, uh, the nine symbol up there is inside of the tree. So, what you want to do, hop off your sparrow, or whatever, uh, device you are on, if you're just using your good old feet, fail a jump a couple of times, and then, uh, proceed on your way up to Zer. So he's gonna be up here, which is kind of, we're falling again. Which is kind of weird, because obviously we're expecting Zer to always be, like, you know, in the tower, or maybe he'll be on the farm. Maybe he will one of these days, but for right now... It's actually pretty cool, because he's integrated, like, with the actual world. There's enemies out here. You can have your gun out and stuff like that. Uh, you don't have to be in third person while visiting Zer either, like he used to be able to. But here he is, nonetheless. If you guys haven't seen him before, this is what Zer looks like. The Agent of the Nine. And uh, I guess now that uh, the tower isn't necessarily a secure place. I mean, it is kind of now, spoilers, you know, after the game and stuff. But... It's not like the normal tower, so I guess this is kind of where he hangs out, right? For people maybe who haven't even completed the campaign yet, and they don't know about that new tower or the farm or anything like that, you know, this is where you can come to visit Zer. So anyway, let's see what this hairy uh, mother effer has this week for sale. What's in his inventory? Let's see, guys. Let's get it. All right, so first things first, we're going to go through everything we have here, all right? Everything here is for legendary shards, I believe. That's that's what has been rumored, so we're obviously going to check up on that. But for weapon of the week right now, guys, we have the Merciless Fusion Rifle, which, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and pick up because I don't have it. i never gotten it yet, and this is a very, very good weapon. I'll explain to you why right now. So you go ahead and inspect it. You see the exotic perk here. Not to mention it looks really cool. But you see the exotic perk here called Conserve Momentum, all right? The description of this is non-lethal hits with projectiles make this weapon charge faster until its wielder gets a kill. So basically, what this perk does is you, you played with the pocket infinity in year one, right? In Destiny 1, right? It's basically like that, but a much, much better version of the pocket infinity. Think of this weapon as a boss damager. Not as necessarily, you know, you go around and kill things in PvE, just, you know, one-hit things. It's not going to really spec this perk or anything like that. Non-lethal hits, which means, you know, just damage hits. You shooting at a boss and you're obviously not going to one-hit it. Makes it charge faster and fire faster, alright? Until they get a kill. So essentially, if you're facing a boss, for example, the raid boss... You're just going to keep slamming them with shots constantly. You know what I mean? It, it's a really, really good weapon for, bo it, like, damaging bosses. It's just it's just really good. Okay, I don't know how else to put it. It's a very, very good weapon for doing that. The amount of impact on it is very good. Range is very good for when you're fighting the boss or strikes. It doesn't matter. It's a very, very good fusion rifle, and I definitely recommend you guys pick it up if you have the legendary shards available. If not, it's not too hard. You know, just grind for some things, play the game throughout the weekend... And you should get enough to buy this before Tuesday. Which, by the way, it doesn't go. He, Zer doesn't go away on Sunday anymore. He goes away on Tuesday. So he stays from Friday until Tuesday now. Until Tuesday's reset. Which is pretty darn cool, if I do say so myself. It gives you a little more time to get the materials you need to actually buy the gear you want. Which, like I said, if you're planning on doing the raid or you're grinding strikes, this is a very, very good weapon. And I recommend it. 
Obviously, I have to infuse it up. It's 270, but nonetheless, I mean, you know, I'll, uh, I'll definitely work on that. Uh, other perks here, we have Chambered Compensator, Increased Stability, uh, Moderately Controls Recoil, Slightly Decreases Handling Speed. We have Extended Mag, uh, Greatly Increased Magazine Size, but Reloads Much Slower. Uh, greatly Increased Magazine Size, Decreased Reload Speed. Um, we have, okay, we have Impetus, I think that's how it's pronounced. Reloading Immediately After a Kill Increases Weapon Damage for a Short Time. This will help if you're actually using this uh, to just kill, like, normal enemies or... Uh, you know, major cabal or major enemies instead of, like, the, the real yellow health, like, named enemies, like the bosses and stuff. Um, let's see. Fitted stock. We have the stock makes this weapon more stable, but, uh, but heavy. So it increases stability, moderately controls recoil, and slightly decreases handling speed. So that's, like, aim down sight, you know, maybe how fast you run with it, you know, things like that. So... Nonetheless, this gun is very, very good. It's a power weapon, you know what I mean? So handling doesn't really come into effect. You only pull it out when you really need to kill something or damage a big, big boss. Now moving on, guys, we have Hunter Gear. All right, so this chest armor is one of the best for the Hunter. I personally have a Hunter. I'm not on her right now, but I am. Uh, I, I would pick up this chest plate, but the thing is, I already got this earlier in the game. For those of you who don't know, when you play the storyline, you actually get to pick an exotic out of, like, three, and this is the one I picked, because this one was definitely the best. So, the exotic perk for the Raiden Flux, uh, without a doubt, makes the Blade Dancer, or Arc Strider, <laughs> sorry guys, you know, just kind of having flashbacks, uh, very, very good, to say the least, because it is just absolutely ridiculous. If you guys remember from Destiny 1, Mask of Third Man was supposed to make the Blade Dancer very, very good and constantly regenerate time with the Blade Dancer, but it never really lived up to its full potential. This Raiden Flux chess piece does its justice, all right? So quick successive attacks with Arc Staff increase its damage output and duration. That's the thing. It's quick successive attacks. That means it doesn't have to be kills. You just need to be able to hit an enemy, and you constantly increase its damage output and its duration. It's very, very good. It's the best chess piece. It's the best exotic, in my opinion, armor, uh, you know, for the Arc Strider, and I definitely recommend you guys pick it up if you didn't earlier in the story, or if you don't have a Hunter yet, or, you know, you're, you want to pick up another exotic when you're playing the story, just get this one. It's totally up to you. The one in the story will drop at a lower level, so, I mean, take that into account, but then that also means you can use it earlier before you get to level 20, so that could help. Uh, the Titan here, we have Doom Fang Pauldrons. Now, I don't personally, I have a Titan, but I don't have her leveled up or anything like that yet, so I don't really have too much experience with the Titan in Destiny 2 yet, but these gauntlets are very, very good, according to my friend Yanni and Simon. My, my friends Yanni and Simon. They're basically the only ones with Titans at this point. So, these Doom Fang Pauldrons, they're gauntlets for the Titan, and the exotic perk here is Horns of Doom. Shield Bash, Melee Hits, Recharge, Shield Throw. Uh, melee ability kills recharge centennial shield super all right so i'm gonna briefly explain to you what this means in my personal opinion you know as far as i can um this basically means you get more shield throws okay and the reason i say that when you're using centennial is because normally you only get one shield throw and that's it you know nothing else will help you okay nothing else will help you you will you will not be able to throw it again you just have to melee 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 now, the thing is, there's a perk on the Centennial that you can unlock that does give you an extra shield throw, okay? Combined with this perk, meaning you sh you throw your shield, right? And then you can throw your shield again because of the perk you have on your subclass. And then you get a melee kill. And then you can throw your shield some more. You know what I mean? It's a very, very good exotic. And this is the one I'm personally going to be picking up. When I'm playing the campaign, because this is actually one of them. I believe all of these three are one of the ones that you can pick up while playing the campaign. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, nonetheless, I will be picking this up when I do play the campaign on my Hunter, or my Titan, I'm sorry. So I don't actually have to waste the shards here. I'll be picking it up when I play the campaign, because it's definitely the best exotic. Now, moving over to the Warlock, my main character, the Wings of Sacred Dawn. Now, this is one of the exotics you can also choose between. I chose to personally go with the Eye of Another World exotic. Very, very good exotic, by the way, just to let you guys know. Uh, we're not reviewing that one, though. All right, so this is one of the ones you can pick. And the reason I didn't pick it is not because it doesn't look cool, okay? This looks badass. Look at the chest piece. Look at the wings on the back. It looks absolutely insane, guys. It really does. I didn't pick it 
because of its of its usefulness. Okay, its usefulness is it's no use to me at all. The exotic perk here is Tome of Dawn. When Dawn Blade is equipped, aiming weapons while in midair suspends you there for a short time. Precision hits extend this effect's duration. So if you guys don't know from Destiny 1, the Warlock Sunsinger actually had a perk called Angel of Light. It did the exact same thing except for the precision hit. So they did buff the perk a little bit, but now it's made into an exotic piece of armor. And you have to obviously use an exotic slot on your armor section to actually, you know, use this perk. And while this may be useful to some people, you know, if it is useful to you, go ahead and use it. But this is definitely not useful to me. I don't find it any more beneficial to hover in midair and shoot your gun at people than it would be to just constantly have uh, void kills, you know, regenerate your abilities, your class abilities, or, you know, what the Eye of the Another World does, which is basically just provide better regeneration speed for all your stuff in the first place. And there's other exotics there too, uh, like the boots I have are also very, very good, if I can go ahead and look at those real quick. The Luna Faction boots, very, very good. Your rifts gain the ability to automatically reload, reload allies' weapons. Very good exotic. What I'm trying to say is this looks absolutely stunning, okay? It does. And for that reason alone, I'm going to pick it up. But the reason I didn't choose it for my campaign mission is just because it sucks, man. It doesn't it doesn't do anything beneficial to me. If it does for you, go for it. It doesn't do anything for me. So this is basically just like a, a useless exotic, in my personal opinion. You put it on in the tower when you want to look cool. And, uh, well, that's that's essentially it. So anyways, guys, that is what Xur has. All right, again, my recommended pickups, this gauntlet, this chest piece, and definitely this fusion rifle if you guys don't have them already. Like I said, you will have the opportunity to pick all of these exotic armors up here when you're playing the story for the first time on that specific character. But this Merciless right here, definitely a pickup. And again, if you guys don't have enough shards right now, Xur's here until Tuesday, not Sunday. Okay, keep that in mind. Grind for your legendary shards. It's not hard. Okay, I've been playing for a week and a little bit. I already have 235 of them. I had more because I obviously just bought the chest piece and the fusion rifle. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to go grind now and work on actually infusing this fusion rifle up because I don't actually have any high fusion rifles right now that would infuse that up. I do have that man of war, but you know, obviously that's 281 and that wouldn't really infuse it up too much. But uh, nonetheless, thank you all so much for watching. And if you guys enjoyed, make sure you go ahead and smash the video up with a like. Uh, share it around with your friends. Let everybody know where Zer is and, you know, what he's selling and what you guys recommend and everything like that. Tell me in the comment section below if you guys are going to go pick up anything from Zer this week. And uh, without further ado, that has been uh, Zer Video, week one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you on the next one. It's been Frost, guys. Take care. We just go no, 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 we can't come close, come close. Got it for the low, 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 low. Waited for the six, but it's going slow mo. Yeah, don't go, don't go. I just can't come close, come close. I'm looking for the local.